Andrew McCart, IFL TV and Association with MTK Global. So happy and delighted to be joined by Martin Murray. Martin, I've got to say thank you for doing this because I've been watching your Instagram. I follow your Instagram. I know you're a busy man with a family. So first and foremost, how are things with you and things on your side? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, things are good. Yeah. Um, just this lockdown's become normal now, hasn't it? So just kind of like in a, in a bit of a routine with family. You have your ups and downs, good days and bad days. Organised care since we with kids doing school work and all that carry on. But yeah, we're just training when we can. Um, bike rides, walks, just 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 the usual really. But yeah, we're good, mates. We're good. Finding it, finding it all okay, to be honest. Definitely. Well, I was going to say, like, normally you're home for a wee while, then you go into camp and you're home for a wee while. Your wife and kids not sick of you yet? No. No, no, not at all. <laughs> they, they, they might be... They might be sick of me, but um, but I'm not sick of them. I, I, obviously, usually in camp, during school, like a normal day if they're not on holidays, during school, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, my wife, Jem's in work. So it's just me on my own with dog, you know, after training. So I'm uh, I'm just I'm just made up spending that extra bit of bit of time with them. But usually when you when you Obviously, you're in camp, you're training, you, you train, you're home, you rest, you're doing nothing because the kids are in, in the house all day, constantly just moving about, non-stop, you know what I mean? There's no there's no chill time, really. But it's, yeah, it's good, just just cracking on with it. I've got to ask as well, because I think well, the, the last time I interviewed you, the last couple of times I've interviewed you, you've said that, I can remember you just, saying that you've lost the passion for the world title, the obsession with it, sorry, you've lost the obsession. Yeah. But because, of the, because of this lockdown now, do you still have a passion for fighting? Yeah, of course I do, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of said it was going to be my last year this year. You had a fight in America, uh, made your uh, manager, the European title. So the idea was um, get them to sign off with that and then, you know, we'll... we'll um, going to retirement happy but I say this one minute one minute I'm saying that and the next minute I'm thinking oh I'm going to beat Bernard Hopkins of England fighting till I'm 50 <laughs> odd do you know what I mean so I really don't know I'm just taking it one day at a time uh, one fight at a time one week at a time obviously the the obsession with winning, winning a world title for me is gone but I've still got the passion there for boxing for fighting and the kind of you know, I kind of want to go out, want to go out in style type thing. I want to want to go a couple of fights before I retire, and then I can just enjoy retirement then, when it, whenever that may be. No, loosely, you know, the way your your family set up is quite good with the training and stuff like that. So I think your retirement is going to be good as long as you've uh, you've done you've done me a little bit of money. You should be all right, man. I think because you've got a lovely family there. Sorry, one, one, one minute. You know, you know, I'm I'm happy. Yeah. You know, I could, I could be better off or could be worse off mm. I'm happy with what I've got you know I, I, I don't I'm I'm, I'm a bit of a caveman in some respects you know what I mean I'm, I'm easily pleased like I'm driving around in a van do you know what I mean so, so man yeah can't beat a van I could, <laughs> I could be driving around <laughs> I'm, I'm forever going to tip I could, I could be driving around in a nice car but I'm happy in a van do you know what I mean me, me wife me kids are happy we live in a nice house. We've got a we've got an happy good life. I'm I'm an happy man. Like I said, I could I could uh, have more, but I could have less. I'm just grateful for what I've got. Again, the, the right attitude to have, Martin. I want to say mention the American thing as well because obviously everyone knows about your past and stuff like that. You've done that great interview with uh, a guy called Henry, and I think you sort of elaborated a lot on your past and stuff yeah. like that, and the reasons why you couldn't get into America. But now you've got the green light. I mean, Madison Square Garden, Vegas, anywhere in America, is that obviously that's something you want to achieve fighting out there before you retire, I'd imagine? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it'd be nice. Um, you know, it would be nice there, but because I I had so many fights over there in America over the you know past couple of years, couldn't get my visa. It was kind of like a closed door mm. for me, that. So I didn't, I just put it behind me and it was just one of them. But then I've, I've just recently got my visa. So then he had a fight in October in Madison Square Garden. The uncle of Canonga card, I think he fought in October. But he had a fight in there anyway. And um, they didn't want to take the risk just in case, even though I got my visa, I couldn't get in. Mm -hmm. So they said to us, basically, go, show us, that, show us that you can get in the fight with her for you next year. So I went Vegas. 
uh, watching Frampton. Um, what a trip that was. I and it was obviously, right. obviously now I can uh, I can get in, so it's kind of opened the door, the the window, you know, the, the fight in America's a possibility now. So hopefully that'll happen before before I retire. But who knows? Like I said, we'll take it one fight at a time. Let's talk about you fighting then. I mean, you fought in, big, in front of big crowds, yeah, uh, uh, loads of times in your career, many, many times. I mean, you. What's your sort of thoughts on it? Boxing returning, but just fighting in front of nobody, just you, Jamie, your coach, Nigel, maybe even me, Coogan, or whoever. But that is it. No fans. What's your thoughts on that? You know what from a from a fighter's point of view, um, the you know, I mean. I can speak for myself when I say I love them big stadium fights. I love that, them crowds, the buzz, the energy you get off it. Um, same with the small shows. And I just think when you're fighting, you're fighting. So it's nice to have a good crowd behind you fighting a big arena. But you, for myself anyway, when you're in the ring, you're just fighting. So mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who's there really. As long as you're there, your opponent, your team... You, you know, you, you're kind of happy, but I don't, in my opinion, I don't think it'll work. I don't think, I don't think boxing can work without uh, crowds. You know, maybe, maybe a big, massive pay-per-view show, but I just think the normal um, low-key shows, you know, in the small, smaller uh, venues, I don't think, I don't think they can make it work because, the, the kind of it costs so much money to do, and they get a lot of money off, uh, you know, on the door of ticket sales. So I, I don't know. I don't think it'll work. I mean, it'd be great if it does, but I just think it's all going to continue as soon as everything's everything's sorted again. Unless they do one of them big mega uh, pay per view shows where there's uh, going to be a lot of people tuning in paying for it. That's the thing as well, though, man, isn't it? It's like a lot of fighters on these small hall shows are on a ticket deal. So the more tickets they sell, the more money they make. So it's it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's hard. People think, you know, you're a professional boxer because the word professional comes with it. Yeah. They think that you're automatically they think that you're loaded. Do you know what I mean? Professional footballer, fair enough. Professional rugby union player, something like that. Yeah, obviously, golfer, but professional boxer... It, People think because the word professional come before it, you're loaded, but it's not. I've not. I did it myself. I, you know, when I started out, I, the money I used to make more money on the tickets I sold. So there was a big, it was a big drive and passion for me to sell as much as I could because I could get as much money, like you said, on a ticket deal. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, and I've known fighters over years gone by who's paid for their own camps, trained, sold enough tickets just so they could pay for their opponents. Do you know what I mean? So, so they can fight, and it's it it's a it's an hard game, and I really feel for for them type of fighters who, who are on the way up. Who, who that's the case. But like I said, I don't think I don't think boxing will, will resume up until all this COVID nineteen shits out the window and it's all sorted. I mean, I think boxing. I, I, I know football's doing it. Football's an obviously different kettle of fish, but boxing especially. You, you can't get any more closer than boxing, can you, contact sport-wise? You know what I mean? So, even in the... I don't know. I just don't think it's going to work anyway. Well, that brings me on to my next question then. Eddie Hearn said that he's got the fight camp coming along, basically putting on fights in his back garden. I mean, he's got a bigger back garden than most people like, but he could probably pull it <laughs> off. So, yeah. what's your what's your thoughts on that? Because I've heard fighters say, I'll fight him in his backyard. So, this is the opportunity to actually do that. So, what's your thoughts on Eddie putting on these shows? In, in Eddie's backyard, does he mean? How does he mean in, in his actual back garden? Well, yeah, I, I, I got it. The Matchroom HQ in Essex, they've got a big, huge sort of. All like, right, yeah. Garden. Obviously, I've, I've, I've not seen that place, but again, if it's. Let me see if, if you can see it. Let me see. I'll put, I'll put up uh, some pictures that Eddie sort of posted of the sort of. I don't know if you'll see it on the camera there. So that's sort of like. What is it? Can you see that? So that's like yeah. a diagram with the ring in the middle of the thing, yeah. the, the house that's in the background. Sound, that that sound from from a from a you know fighter perspective, that sound that that's happy days. But my my only thing was it uh, thing is with it is unless you 
unless certain fighters are fighting, how do you make it work? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like money, money wise. Do you know what I mean? Do you think that, of, that, to it, me, it, that to me, Oliver, you say to us, yeah, uh, we, when we was getting close to a fight, we used to have a proper spa, yeah. And it was literally just like a fight, but you had 16 ounce gloves on, a guard, all that carry on. Mm -hmm. And it was behind closed doors. So doors were shut, just you, you and your sparring partner or him and his trainer or whatever, and nothing left the gym. And it was a proper spa, you know, proper safety spa. That to me is how, how it would just be. It just looks like, like it would be that, but I just don't think it, I just don't see how it works money wise, unless. Unless Eddie put his hand in his ass back pocket and uh, sort of sorts it out for everyone, I don't, I don't know. But you know what? I hope it does. There's a lot of fight fans out there who's missing boxing. A lot of fighters who who, who want fights, myself included. But um, yeah, we, we, we'll just see. Hopefully, it does anyway. I think I think it's a sort of the UFC model that you might be following. I don't know. Again, I don't know how Dana White's fight. I don't know if you've been seeing the the UFC. They've put three shows on so far. Um, yeah. I don't know how they're paying the fighters, but they seem to be doing it. I think Eddie's sort of like going along that model. And I think as, as, as a selfish point of view, as a fan, I kind of want to see it because I'm, I'm sort of like needing that drug. I'm needing that boxing fix. Yeah. You know what I mean? But again, like what you're saying, there's a, there's a logistical side of things that we need yeah, to like. that, Yeah, but there is. But that would work if it can, if it can be sorted. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, if, if you've got fighters who are willing to do it, and I'm sure there are, and obviously, promoters is willing to put up the uh, you know the wages and the purses. It's fine because that that can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you're not you, you're gonna miss the crowd in the fight, but you're still fighting. You're still gonna get action. So I really do hope it happens. Um, and if it you know, like I said, if if Eddie does go ahead with it, it can work and it, and it will work. And Dana White's proved that with UFC. If Eddie said to you, because I think the fighters need to go on in isolation for two weeks before the fight. If Eddie, Eddie Hearn came up to you and said, Martin, we've got a fight for you. Or MTK came up to you and said, Martin, there's a fight there. Eddie's backyard. You need to isolate for two weeks. You need to do this. Test this, test that, blah, 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 blah. Are you like, yes, let's do it 100%? Or would you have questions and stuff like that? What what you want to... Mate, I, I'd actually go into the own fighters, but yeah, I'd never mind Eddie. <laughs> Eddie I'd, I'd go there. I've been everywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm a fighting man. I want to retire and and have no regrets saying I went everywhere, I fought everybody. And, um, you know, that that's what I've done throughout my career. So without a shadow of a doubt, I'd uh, I'd jump at that opportunity. And I'm, I'm pretty sure most fighters out, out there with themselves. I would ask as well, like, uh, sort of like this lockdown and quarantine has put emphasis on the fact that we need to see the big fights happen now. We've, we've seen guys like Tyson... Uh, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua being talked about and while they're taking step aside money and all this sort of stuff, just so we can see the big fights happening. Your opinion on this, do you think Wilder should take that step aside money and let us have Joshua, Joshua Fury? Or Fury Joshua, however you want to look at it? Um, contracts are contracts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I've known fighters take step aside money. Uh, it'd be great if it, if it does. If it does happen. But it's how much he'd want stepping aside money. You know, it's how, I'm pretty sure the fight, the first fight they had, they generated um, so much money. They got a big, they got a big purse. Um, I don't think I think Fury will do the same to get me Wilder. I, I think that's that that's a fight gone now. So everybody wants to see Fury and Joshua. But my question is, is, is when Dylan when is Dylan White gonna get his chance? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's you know, he, he's out there, he's fighting everybody, they keep putting this money in front of him, he's beating him, he's ch and he, he's getting no close to his chance. I just dope he gets a chance to. Everybody wants to see Wilder and Fiore, um, Fiore and Joshua, but I'd like to see Dillian White get his chance as well. In saying that then, do you think, let's talk about Fury versus Wilder, uh, Fury versus Joshua in December in Saudi Arabia, if Wilder takes step aside money, that means Wilder will probably get the win of the WBC belt, which pushes Dillian even further down the line. But do you think yeah. Dillian should get the win of Joshua Fury before Wilder? Would you like to see that? Might be a dumb question. 
Yeah, I'd like to see, yeah, of course, because I want him to get his chance. Definitely want him to get his chance. I think I think he deserved it, but you've got to be realistic here. It, it's 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 not going to happen with if you know if you're in contract, you're in contract. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know the kind of ways around it, like like you said, step aside, one it? But um, but yeah, I don't like like I said, I I, I don't think Wilder beats Shorty. I think that's uh, you know we. I think that fight is over with now, um, but you know it might, Josh, have, right? it might have to happen before Joshua and Fury does. I don't know, but boxing's a weird, weird old game, isn't it? Definitely, weird old game. we've been in the game long enough to know that, Martin. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll put you on the spot then, Joshua Fury. Who's who are you picking? Sorry. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. I've kind of, I've, all, I've, I've thought it over the past couple of years. Obviously, you know, you get asked a lot about it, and I've always kind of thought it'd be a close fight. But um, I'm not saying that it won't be close. But I just think Fury's the the on uh, on form fighter, and what he did to Wilder in his last fight, I didn't, I didn't, didn't expect that. I think he's improving all the time. He's massively confident, and I think Fury's a man to beat now at heavyweight. What about, what about Wilder versus White then? If that fight, if we do get Joshua Fury, would you like to see Wilder versus? And it might not be for the WBC belt that that White's been asking for, but it's a fight that he wanted. It might not be no belt. I'm, on the a, line, I'm, I'm a big Dylan White fan. Um, yeah, I am. I, I, I respect him for everything that he's doing, everything that he's he, he's gone through, he's going through. Um, if Wilder and Dylan White fought, I'd, I'd Dylan White all day. I'm telling you, um, yeah, I, I, I just hope he gets his chance. Hope he gets his chance. I think if he fought Joshua again, I think he'd beat Joshua. Dylan White, I think he's improved massively. I think, obviously, everybody wants to see Fury and and, um, and Joshua. But um, I, I, I think Dylan White and Fury's a, a better fight. The heavyweights are dominating boxing right now. I mean, like, Old heavyweights as well, Mike Tyson. He's he's, he's yeah, been he's smashed. Back, he's, he's back. He's back, baby. I mean, yeah. what's your thoughts on that, Mark? I mean, you you you're, you're saying that you're quite happy. If you were to retire now, you'd be quite happy to retire, and you've got a lovely family and whatnot. Do you ever think in the back of your mind you'll have those those itchy knuckles like Mike Tyson and be 55 and be like, I want to not, come back? Not, not that age, you know. They said the last thing you lose is your power, Tyson. Has got that in abundance, and eh, you know, you still see him on little stuff he's doing. You still see that he's kind of, you know, he's a natural. He's got the moves, but mate, you're fighting these young, young guns, and you know, I, I, it's all right. Me now, I, I'm what pro thirty eight in a couple of months, and I'm kind of like ready for retirement. Um, but I can, you know, I'm I, I'm still there with it. I was Tyson fifty five. Yeah. 53, so, I think. 53, 53, sorry. 53. Yeah. I'm not saying that he can't come and I'm not saying that he can't come back and, you know, um, chin a few people. Um, but I just think he's a little bit too old, especially fighting somebody like, you know, them them top heavyweights right now at the minute. Like, you know what I mean? Well, but but they, also, you know, but, but like I said, boxing's a funny old game. Who knows what can happen? And you know what? If he, if he thinks he can do it and he wants to do it, good luck to him. There's, well, there's that exhibition fight being talked about with Evander Holyfield because Evander Holyfield came out and said that he's he's coming back and he's willing yeah. to do a four round exhibition with Mike Tyson. Now, as a boxing fan, Martin, don't lie to me. You want to see that, don't you? No, no, that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, without without a shadow of a doubt, it would, and it'd be good to see what they've got left. You know what I mean? It would it would be brilliant to see, but I just think um, an exhibition. And I'm, I'm guessing it'll be with big gloves on and a real fight um, with with small ten ounces on and you know a, a lot more on offer. I just think it's different, mate. I just mm-hmm. think it's completely different. But who knows what will happen? Back to you then, Martin. Could you retire today, right now, this very second, a happy fighter with what you've done in your career so far? You know what I could. Um, like I said, I, I could have achieved more. You know, you know, if I'd have got the decisions there and there, you know, I, I could have, I could have retired being, you know, 
officially a former world champion. But things for me could have been a lot worse. And I, I you know, I could have I could have done a lot worse and I could have achieved of a lot uh, could have achieved a lot less. So I can't, don't get me wrong, there's still that little desire there for go out in style and have a couple of fights. But if I retired now, you know, it, it, it would not bother me and I would be able to retire happy. I'm, like I said to you earlier, I've, I've got my wife, I've got my kids, I'm, I'm, I'm seriously happy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an happy guy, there's, there's nothing in boxing there. And that, that kind of, don't get me wrong, the big fights do, but, but there's, no, there's nothing that, I've got any guilt or regret about, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Whether I'll stay, whether I'll stay in boxing when I retire, I don't know. But um, it's always been for me boxing. It's been been a job. You know, it is a job, and when it's over, I'll just go on to the next job, and, and that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll just keep doing that. But I could retire easily, uh, an happy fighter, and happy, happy with what I've done and achieved. That was going to bring on, <coughs> excuse me. That was going to bring me on to my next question. Then, would you consider coaching? I mean, you've been coached by the great Oliver Harrison. Jamie yeah. Moore's doing. He's proved that he's a top class coach as well. So you've yeah. you've got that knowledge in you, Martin. Would you go on and? Yeah. Maybe you know what? I was only on about this. The other, I was only on about this the other day, uh, last week to Jim. Me and Jim was having a chat. And oh, your wife's uh, going to fight. No, I'm telling you, what, I won't like fights. Uh, have you said not, Dad? <laughs> I've I've seen that she's she, she's she's out doing you in them workouts anyway. Oh god, yeah, she's um she's like my fitness instructor. Uh, she's just getting me trip Sunday, but you know what? It's good. Some days I, I can't be asked. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Some days I want a day off, but she's like, nah, come on, get up and train. So it's good having a by my side, motivating me. But like I said, I was only saying to her last week. I spent a lot of time with Oliver, a lot of time with him. And, you know, what that man didn't know about boxing, it wasn't worth knowing. Mm -hmm. He honestly, he, he, he was an unbelievable trainer and his knowledge was, was second to none. And I spent a lot of time with Oliver. Um, so what, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to get round to saying is, he taught me a hell of a lot. And like I said, I was saying to Jim last week that I think I've got a duty to train fighters when I retire. Um, because he passed on a lot of knowledge to me and I believe that I've got a lot of knowledge that I can pass on. I believe that I could be a good trainer and I've got a lot to give to the sport. So I think I think it definitely will. You know, when I, I spoke with Ollen, and you know, I kind of promised him on his, on his deathbed that he's a lad lover you've gone there, Martin, are you still there? I just can't see you. There you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I got you now. I, 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 the last bit I got there, you said to Oliver on his deathbed, that was sort of like, and then you cut out a little bit. Yeah, he, he, he's son Lerone. Um, he, Oliver trained him from being, um, being, you know, as soon as he could walk, really, and yeah. he taught him all styles. He did, he did tie boxing, boxing. Um, he, he's got everything. What what that lad can do talent wise, you know, it's uh, you, you can't put a limit on it. So I, I told him that if Oliver if Lerone wants me training when he turns pro, I will. So um, I've kind of I, I've got that commitment now that I've made, and I'll follow through with that. So we'll we'll, we'll just wait and see. We we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But I think I will. I think I will open a gym or. Um, train out of Oliver's. So I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do some training wise because, like I said, I've, he's passed on a lot of knowledge to me that I believe I can pass on to other fighters. Brilliant, man. I, like I said, I would like to see you stick in the game because the, the knowledge that you have as well, when I talk to you and what Oliver's passed down to you and Jamie and everybody, it'd be good to see you stick around. I mean, I need to get my interviews, so it'd be good to see you stick around. Oh, you've gone again, I think. You there, bud? Yeah, yeah, go on, mate, yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, it'd be good to see you stick around in the world game of boxing. I mean, the knowledge that you have is, is second to none as well. When I speak to you off camera as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, I, I do. I mean, I'm not a boxing fan, so I don't 
particularly know that much about certain fighters because I don't watch enough of it. Mm. But actually, boxing and breaking stuff down, um, techniques, um, game plan stuff like that. Like I said, I believe that I've got a lot to give. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to my career in boxing after after the retire, whatever that may be. Definitely, and, I, and I'm so mad to be honest with you, man. Before I let you go, I mean, you probably got some a walk or a cycle with your beautiful family to get to now. But yeah, I've been painting all day. I've just finished, just been doing the garden. I think we're going for a walk after here, mate. Yeah, definitely. Well, finally, have you got anything you'd like to add to people watching this or anything like that? Just stay positive. You know, it's hard. It is hard. Um, you know, I try and put as much, as much positive stuff on my social media as I can. Don't get me wrong. You know, just like just like in life, outside of lockdown, you have your good days and your bad days. But just stay positive. Just love your family. You know, if there's that one person who you think needs a phone call or a text message, just message them. Just give them a bell. Um, you know, an older person. Um just stay in contact with people because I think with lockdown, that's what a lot of people started doing, you know, connecting more with people. So just uh, just do that, really. But but just just stay positive and just enjoy it while you can. Definitely. And that's the perfect way to end this, Martin. As always, a pleasure talking to you, mate. I really enjoy our, our chats. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you in the ring soon. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you the show soon, mate. Definitely. Keep up the good I, can't work. I can't wait for it, mate. Stick in. I'll hopefully speak to you soon. Nice, Nandy, top man. Take it easy. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Good night, pal.